Hello and a warm welcome back to my channel, just you're all well and in good spirits. Let's have a look at a past paper question here, just borrowed from any exam, none in particular. We've got SO2, two moles of it, and we've got some one mole of oxygen in equilibrium, forgive my bottom arrow there, it is rate of forward, is rate of backward, with two moles of SO3, gaseous, in case you can't read my writing. First part of the question is state KC, the KC expression always gets you one mark and this is on a high level paper. Why do students get it wrong? Well, they somehow forget the integer or the coefficient, which is in the uh, equation as given. Don't forget to square your SO3. You're going to square your SO2. And you're just going to leave your O2 in square brackets. I can feel myself hesitating because really KC is going to be unitless. Yes, you had right, it is unitless because these are activities, not constant. <laughs> them as concentrations. Part B, after it's asked you for a value for Kc, it's going to ask me something about changing a factor which will alter the position of equilibrium. Remember, only temperature will change the value of Kc. Pressure and volume will also change the position of equilibrium, but not the value of Kc. Okay, the question is, if I increase the volume what would happen to the position of the equilibrium? Well, if I increase the volume, get this, this larger or larger uh, space or system that's surrounding the, the internal system, then the pressure is going to decrease. So volume pressure relationships, you know from your gas laws. Now we're going to invoke Le Chatelier's principle, and uh, that's my best French accent. <laughs> and if we decrease the pressure, the equilibrium wants to increase the pressure to relieve that external stressor on the system. So which side has more moles of gas to counter that change, you know, the decrease in pressure, increase in volume? Well, it's the left-hand side, isn't it? Because the left-hand side has two SO2, one O2. So it's got three moles on the left, Avogadro's law, and two moles on the right. So the equilibrium will shift to the left-hand side. <laughs> And finally, we will no doubt be asked to do a calculation for a value for Kc. Okay, so we need to know our moles, but this is moles per decimeter cubed. There's no volume conversion here to get from moles to concentration. It's given in concentration terms in the question. Okay, so how many moles of SO2, O2 of SO2, one and a half of O2, and three of SO3? It will always go on to say, we are allowed, we give you permission to reach an equilibrium with each other. So clearly, uh, if it's not an equilibrium position, that means Q, Q, the reaction quotient, does not equal Kc. So we've got our 2SO2, our 1.5O2, and our 3SO3. The equation is balanced. Is it 2s, 2s, yes, 2, 2, 4, add 2 is 6 oxygen, 2, 3 is a 6 oxygen on the right, it is, it is. I've put at x kelvin, x kelvin, because the temperature is irrelevant, okay, the temperature needs to be constant, that's what it's telling you, but it's irrelevant to the sum that we're going to be doing using the ice table. The question goes on to say that we found, we found, stumbled across one and a half moles of sulfur dioxide. So what's the value of Kc? Well, I can see your little fingers reaching for the pen to draw out an ice table. I is initial, C is change, and E is equilibrium. I always rewrite the equilibrium expression at the top. It tends to be what other people do as well. It's not just a Mr. M for Chem thing. This is just convention. This is what we do. Pop in the values that are in the question. So we're going to put in the two, the 1.5, and the three, underneath the respective reactants and products. We don't need to put the equilibrium sign in. I know it's there. I know it's there. Okay. And in the question, it tells me that one and a half moles of SO2, so that's a reactants on the left-hand side, were found. What's the value for Kc? Ah, well, if we started with 2 and ended with not with 1.5, we lost 0 0.5. Yes, change the colour there, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> we lost 0 0.5. You got that? So the change was 0 0.5. So now I need to deduce what the change will be 
with the other reactant and the other product? Well, it's a 2 to 1 ratio, sulfur dioxide to oxygen, so that doesn't lose 0 0.5, it loses half of 0 0.5, which is 0 0.25, because it's 2 to 1 reacting ratio. Take 0 0.25 from 1.5, you've got 1.25. Okay. Go to the other side, we're not taking away, are we? We are adding. And it's a 2 to 2, or 1 to 1 reacting ratio between the SO2 and the SO3, it's not going to lose half a mole, it's going to gain half a mole. Okay, take these steadily, you've got 90 seconds per mark, bags of time. We now have our equilibrium, <coughs> excuse me, equilibrium concentrations. Write out the KC expression, don't forget to square what needs squaring. Not in this one, but you can also cube if it needs cubing. And plug the numbers in that we have deduced from the given quantities in the question. Three and a half squared over 1.5 squared times 1.25 will give us an answer for Kc of 4.36. So it favours the right-hand side. Hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day.